What's going on? Welcome to Move Fast, Lift Heavy podcast. This is Joe Roscoe, co-host of MFLH Pod. Thanks for tuning in. If you're on youtube.com forward slash move fast, lift heavy, please subscribe. You can see not only podcast interviews like we're doing right now, but Christian's day-to-day training, as well as some lifestyle stuff with the brand um, and all things apparel. Check us out at movefastlifttheavy.com. And if you like the podcast, if you're on a podcast platform, rate, give us the stars, the thumbs up, the whatever, tell your friends about it. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, all right, let's bring on the man, co-host of the pod, founder of Move Fast, Lift Heavy, a man that stands six foot one, usually wearing a burly beard with trendy glasses that may or may not have a prescription in them but they do. He's blind as a bat, folks. Um, please welcome to the podcast, the man, the myth, the legend, Christian Harris. Let's go. <laughs> we are back with the intros. I love it. <laughs> we are back. It is uh, 12 noon. It's high noon here in Miami. And, Eastern uh, Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. I would uh, guess that it's the same for you in New York, right? It's also 12 o'clock. Just a wee bit this way. You know where it's not 12 o'clock, though? <laughs> hmm. Probably Australia. The, other of the, the other side of the world. The other side of the pond, way down under. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's probably like 3.30 in the morning. Um, we would surely never be able to talk with someone at that <laughs> that time, right? I mean, I'd be pretty dead at that point. Yeah. You you would have been in bed by eight o'clock p.m. So I'd be waking up soon though. You 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 would be you would be. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about that air bike workout from Train with CH, but I want to talk to uh, our guest about it too. I want to bring him in on uh, the conversation. So why don't you intro our guest and we'll start the fun. Yeah. So our next guest, uh, you've probably seen him around the CrossFit space for quite some time um aussie native he is a vegan athlete um and this guy i'm very excited to talk to today he's very very handsome as well we're gonna throw that in there uh, as well James, oh are James, you talking yeah. about are you talking about me no I'm handsome. no no oh you're you. oh you're <laughs> handsome so then james is handsome as you said as well so that means that someone else is handsome no no i meant like another attribute of his is that you weren't self-proclaiming no, 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 no. I would, I would, are I you sure oh okay 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 work hard stay humble bro <laughs> <laughs> all right sorry to interrupt go ahead go ahead go ahead uh we're gonna bring on james newberry he's our next guest let's go <laughs> hey guys what's up welcome to the show let's go clap it up for him <laughs> guys thanks for having me I can't believe it's 3.30 over there in the morning. Yeah, man. Oh, and dude, it's so hot here. We're right in the middle of summer and it's still like, um, I just walked outside and um, I'm actually sitting in my garage gym and man, I'm already sweating bullets. It's like, it's, it's, it's full on hot right now. It's kind of like it's, and it's humid too. Never humid in Adelaide where I live, but man, it's hot 3.30 and it's probably 25, 30 degrees somewhere around there. Ouch. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show. Um, My pleasure. Yeah, Absolute especially pleasure. especially at this hour. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's cool. Got st- got stuff to do. Get up, get up, and get it done. Let's start that story where we were like, "Yo, we're so sorry. We thought you were still in the country in the U.S. Uh, why do you think? Tell us why we thought that and that little <laughs> surprise gag that you did. That's hilarious. Uh, so okay, so. The last probably week or so, I have been making out that I'm still in in the States, still getting my way around New York. Uh, We finished basically Waterpalooza a couple of weekends ago now, and I told my girlfriend that I'll be spending um, another week, be going to the UFC uh, for the Ghana fight, and I wouldn't be making it home for a birthday. So she thought I was still in the States and I had to play along and try and make it look like I was in the States posting as if I was still in the States. So 
I messaged a friend that was in New York and I was like, I just, I know I made up a story that I went to LA, then I got, you know, had a photo shoot back in New York and then I had to fly there. So that's why I was at airports. And then, um, yeah, messaged the friend and said, can you send me a clip of me walking, like pretty much of you walking into the gym or someone walking to the gym to see you. So then I can tag you in this post and you can share it to make it look like I'm in New York. But really I was going Miami, LA, LA, Fiji, Fiji, Sydney, Sydney, Melbourne to surprise her for her birthday. Finally made it back and actually did get to do the surprise and it all worked out. I thought I would get caught up somewhere in the mix in a quarantine or missing a flight and not make it back in time, but made it all the way back around 16,000 Ks and made it back for a nice surprise. It all worked out. It all worked out. <laughs> Super boyfriend. And what was the reaction? Did she go wild? Well, what I did was on the way back, I took a, I took a little clip of each plane flight, uh, walking down the streets, um, you know, uh, the sign coming into Melbourne, um, the drive out there. So I just sent her that video. Then the last video was um, walking up to her front door. So I just took a video of the front door, then quickly like put it all together in the way on the, in the Uber on the way to her house from, um, from the airport or well, from Melbourne through to, to uh, Geelong. And, um, and then I sent her the, the clip and um, yeah, I just waited out the front and she got the clip, saw it and then came out the, out the front. Yeah, it was a good surprise. Yeah, she was pretty stoked. Yeah, she, uh, she's like, what are you doing here? I thought you were in New York. I was like, yeah, come back, happy birthday. <laughs> did you, if did you're you listening at to... home right now, if you're listening at home right now and you're trying to figure out a way that you can make some sort of meaningful, uh, you know, surprise for your girlfriend or your significant other. I mean, there you have a great story right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was good. It was like, I thought at some point, I thought like given the, the climate um, at the moment, just with getting through hotel, uh, getting through uh, airports and getting stuck in certain places um, because God only knows I've been stuck a million times in the last probably 18 months overseas, whether it be, Germany or um, in the States or wherever it is, um, getting stuck is is probably the, the biggest thing on my list at the moment. Um, I spent 28 days in isolation coming back the last time. So I was kind of thinking, oh man, maybe like what if what happens if I, you know, if I if I catch catch uh, catch COVID or something on the way home and have to quarantine and be like the surprise is done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, glad it worked out. Did you actually make it to a UFC fight or did you not? Nah, I didn't make it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't make bummer. it. It'd be yeah. good if you did uh, did both. But uh, everyone that's that's uh, listening or watching on uh, YouTube, James just wrapped up Wadapalooza. You guys finished second, correct? Second place? Yeah, second place. Second Congrats place. on that. Um, I'm going to pull up a picture here. <clears throat> <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about the shoey it's called, right? The Shui, yeah. So yeah. we actually, the Shui is an iconic Australian thing that you do. Typically, you would do it at like football grand final. So I think you guys call it like, do you, call, do you guys call it a grand final? Like um, I say like local league football when you play like the, like the, like the Super Bowl, like, but for like local leagues and stuff, what is that called? Championship? I don't know. Championship, yeah. So we call it grand final, grand final day. Um, and typically when you, you're playing grand final day at the end, the winning team would, would do a shoey, um, out of the football boot. Um, I, I think that's where it originated. We had this conversation. We weren't quite sure, but, uh, yeah, so it kind of just made its way around to pretty much any sporting occasion that you, uh, end up, you know, doing well in, you just do a shoey out of the shoe, whichever shoe you're wearing on the competition floor. So, uh, yeah, yeah the shoey just kind of, you know, made its way into CrossFit now too. Had a taste. We Oh, so sweet, man! So sweet. It, it tasted. It tasted like four days of sweat. There you go. There you go. Uh, we all know you as a individual CrossFit Games competitor, uh, OG of the sport. How was it competing uh, team with Matt Delugos and Con Porter? Just what was that experience like? Did you have you trained together? Maybe with Con, I'm assuming at some point you all have been in the same gym. But Matt, did you guys just kind of walk up to Miami and say, you know, let's just wing it? How did it go? 
<laughs> Mate, the, the latter. Uh, I had not even, I've never spoken to Matt Lugos until the day that he walked into the, uh, into the uh, Airbnb the day before we started competition. Never, never spoke a word. Um, <laughs> but I immediately fell in love with the dude. He's such a good guy. And man, he was so fired up, which fired us up. Like we, we'd just done a 40 hour trip from, I flew Adelaide, Sydney. Um, Sydney through Fiji was the only route we could take. Um, then through to LA, then through to Miami after that. So it was 40 hours of travel. And to be honest, actually felt quite good getting off the plane. Um, but yeah, when Maddie walked in the door and I got to know him over the course of say 24 hours before we competed, um, yeah, I was just, he fired me up so much and you could see it in his eyes that he was so keen to get stuck into this competition that it just made you want to go extra hard for him as well. Um, and same with Khan, he was just so pumped about this this trip and and me me as well. Like uh, I, the last time I competed at Waterpalooza was 2015. Um, I was dealing with like a torn patella tendon at the time. I had a broken wrist from the weekend before at OCT um, and, or two weekends before I think it was. And um, yeah, man, it was such a blast, it was, me and Khan have done some competitions before. We did a little bit of a tour after the game. So we did demo team together. So the first comp Khan and I did together, if you would call it that, uh, but working together in a team was um, the demo team for the CrossFit Games um, last year. And that's where we really connected the most. Um, we've been competing against each other, Khan and myself, um, for the last, since 2013. So we're coming on like eight years now. Um, and every competition that we've been in, um, going head to head as individuals, we've usually placed within one spot of each other, pretty much the whole way through, give or take, like sometimes he would pit me and sometimes I would pip him. So we kind of just, you know, grew up doing the same stuff, wound up like we played football, we played rugby <coughs> for a long time, not against each other, but just in our, you know, respective states. Um, and probably had very similar upbringing. So, you know, we hit it off pretty hard. And then after the game, he's like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, man, I'm just hanging around. And he's like, come to Vegas. Went to Vegas, we did some training, uh, we did a bit of partying. And then he's like, you wanna go to France? And I was like, yeah, man, let's go. So we went to France, we did a comp over there. We did a, um, well, he did a comp and I was like, do you want, need it? Do you need a, a coach that I'll come and hang out? And um, then we'll go over and do Butcher's Classic in Copenhagen. And that's kind of where we hit it off. We did a, a team, a partner competition. And yeah, we went from there and went back through, you know, Spain and um, had some time there, then had some time in Mexico. And then he messaged me pretty much straight after that trip and said, hey man, keen for Waterpalooza. And I was like, absolutely, let's do it. So yeah, now we've um, we spent a ton of time together and we've had, we've had a blast getting to know each other more and more. Sounds like a typical bromance right there. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's um it's the uh, it's the uh I guess it's not the stock standard, but it's stock standard including a around the trip uh, around the world trip. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So with the team just concluding as far as your competition, Wadapalooza, is this something that you'll look to do maybe more in the future? What are your plans for this season? Um if any, or are you just kind of, what, what's yeah. the deal? What's going on for 2022 with James Newberry? Yeah, well, that's been the question of late. I've been getting asked that quite a fair bit, like, wh wh where are you at? What are you doing? And um, to be honest, like, I'm pretty much chucking my hat in the ring for absolutely anything and everything this year. So um, I've got a half Ironman um, in about four weeks' time. So I've been doing a little bit of preparation for that. And the funny thing about Waterpalooza is – I did, and this is the first time ever, but I did zero, zero, literally zero um, specific preparation for Waterpalooza. Like I think the first time that I had done a Metcon um, prior to the competition was the first real Metcon I did within about eight weeks of the competition was the day before blowing out the cobwebs off the plane. So I actually really didn't do any, I have been running I've been running and then I would jump in and maybe squat like once a week. Um, and then I've just been doing a little bit of bodybuilding, a bit of gymnastics. And literally my goal for the last probably two months has been trying to get a one-arm handstand. 
Um, that's been like my biggest thing that I've been trying to get. So that my goal for like 2022 was to get a one arm handstand. Um, and then on top of that, you know, throwing my hat in the ring. So um, for different things, but when Khan said, let's get, let's go to Waterpalooza, I was like, yeah, let's go. And then it was like, yeah, I'll do some, I'll do some training for Waterpalooza uh, next week, next week, next week. And so I've just been running and riding my bike and doing a bit of swimming um, yeah. to be honest and not a ton um, of other stuff, but like a few weeks ago, I did a powerlifting comp um, I squatted maybe, you know, once a week leading up to that. I did a bit of bench press leading up to that. I think I did one deadlift session in between then and the games. Um, and I, you know, pulled PRs and crazy things. I think I was just super recovered because I'm usually, and you guys, as you guys know, when you train CrossFit, you're, you're always in the hurt locker. Like you're always, you know, pretty beat down. So I just think I'm just fully, fully recovered and felt great. You know, pulled out some decent numbers in the powerlifting comp. But I was prepping for, you know, I was prepping for this half Ironman. So yeah. it was, you know, complete opposite end of the spectrum. Um, so next month, got the half Ironman. Um, the month after that, I'm doing a partner comp with um, a friend of mine. Oh, a friend of my, well, he's a friend of mine now, but he's a, he's originally a friend of my girlfriend's. So we're doing a little partner comp, just a local one. Um, also have a little sprint triathlon the weekend after the half Ironman. Um, obviously the Open's coming up. So, you know, I'll... I'll my hand up for that too and, and make it as far as I can and you know if all things go well you know make it through to um quarters and, and semis and, and things like that and you know potentially if it if it works out that way then onto the games if that good, doesn't you good know, uh things... good luck good luck making it to quarterfinals James I hope you know fingers crossed for you all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks yeah well I'm just you never know right you never know like um yeah, I'll do. My, I'll do my best. Might, <laughs> might, might uh, they might pull out. You know, Castro's not around, so they might like throw a huge curveball, like wall balls or something like that. You know, something you've never seen before. Yeah, or well, maybe hey, a one arm handstand. Yeah, maybe hey, a one arm. Well, yeah, you'll be ready for it. No, that one he'll be ready for. It's the wall balls that I'm just bringing up. Any common thing, just going with my yeah. joke that hey, Man, I have, to be honest, I have not done a wall ball in probably. I would say good, probably two and a half months. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. How did you but, get into, yeah, you know, how'd you get into this? I'm pulling up this picture. If you're watching on YouTube of uh, James <laughs> with his uh, cycling uh, gig, his triathlon outfit there. How, have you always been into biking and swimming, running all that? Um, no, not always. Um, I, you know, I used to do a little bit of swimming when I was growing up doing surf life sailing dash down here at the beach. It was kind of like a common thing. If you grew up around the beach, you'd, you know, parents would want to make sure that you were safe in the water. Um, so you, you'd go and do, um, like nippers and surf life saving as a kid. Um, so you kind of, we kind of grew up, you know, out on the boards and, um, and, and, you know, swimming at the beach and whatnot. Um, but I never was a great swimmer growing up. Like I was not good at all. Um, I preferred the board. I mean, I preferred, um, you know, the beach events too, like um, flags and um, the sand sprints and things. Uh, but from there, once I, you know, probably probably around the time of, you know, um, uh, rookie year at the Games 2016 was when I really started getting into swimming a lot more and more and more. And then as you become really accustomed to swimming, um, you, you know, you find that steady, steady state position where, you know, you can do it and enjoy it. Whereas when you first start running for the first time ever, it's like, you're running like a kilometer or like, you know, half a mile and you just can't talk to anyone. Whereas once you do it enough and, you know, you can jump in the water and you can, you can actually focus on having a good time, then it's not too bad. So I absolutely love swimming now. Um, and then from there, um, basically the way I fell in love with swim, bike, run, was 2019 uh i did the open we qualified for um oh the open sorry we did a, a sanctioned event i think it was um and then after that i took about three weeks off to do some renovations on my gym um and then I, like i didn't train for those three weeks i just spent some time you know just fixing it up and doing some things around around the box and a friend of mine who moved over from Wales said, hey, man, I've been doing a bit of triathlon and he sparked my interest. And I said, oh, yeah, cool. What, like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm building up for this uh, 70.3. I really want to do an Ironman one day. And I was like, yeah, I've heard of Ironman. That sounds super cool. It'd be a, it looks like a hard, a hard, hard test. And, um, and he goes, you know, there's actually a half Ironman this weekend here in Adelaide. And I was like, oh, cool. I was like, when is it? Like a three days time. And I was like, cool, let's go. And he's like, no, 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 you've got to train, you've got to train. And I was like, no, nah, let's go, let's, have, let's go have a blast. And I figured if I go do this thing, it would fire me back, back up to get back into the swing of training again. 
um, because I've just had three weeks off. You know, if I go out there and, and have a run, um, then, you know, it'll, it'll like spur me on to go and do some more training leading up to, um, you know, to where I needed to be. And so, yeah, we registered, went down, we did this half Ironman and man, I was running down the last one kilometer of the, you know, the half marathon. And I thought to myself, man, I'm so trashed right now. Like my legs are so heavy. I'm like, I'm buckled. Um, I can't imagine it. I can't comprehend my mind having to do this all again, like do a full distance Ironman. I couldn't comprehend. I was like, far out. That's going to be, that's a, that's a, that's going to, that's a beastly assignment. And literally finished that race, <laughs> got on my phone, signed up for the next full Ironman. Wow. Yeah. So, you, so have you done a full Ironman yet? Yeah. Yeah. I did one. Oh, okay. About, got it. Yeah. I did one. Um, uh, 2019 mm -hmm. in December 20, 2019 after the CrossFit Games had concluded, I uh, basically just spent you know a period of time after that um, training you know CrossFit, um, probably roughly about 15 hours a week of CrossFit and maybe an extra seven hours a week of specific triathlon training, which is I guess not a lot for an Ironman, um, but I figured I was doing a ton of other stuff at the same time, and all I, I had, had to carry really over. Do yeah, a bit of carryover, and then also become accustomed to um, become accustomed to you know sitting in the saddle for a long time, and uh, you know getting my legs prepared to you know be, have a long day out in the marathon, and and you know the swimming the three point eight, you know I think um, I think once you have a you know a decent base of fitness and your swimming technique is you know moderate, you can get through three point eight. Um, so like two miles, I think it's two miles, two and a half miles. Um, so. Yeah, I was like confident in the swim and stuff like that. But the other thing I was like, oh, that's a long day out. But, you know, ended up having such a blast. I had a bit of a, an accident before that. I broke I broke uh, some some spinal processes about five weeks out. Like I fell off my mountain bike and, and uh, yeah, cr cr crushed them on my back. Wow. Um, so technically, te technically, if if you're going to do it, it's probably the best way to do it. But, yeah, I, like I broke maybe three ribs, punched a lung and um, – yeah, broke some spinal processes in my back <laughs> right before the lead up. And basically when I said, I really want to do this Ironman, the doctors were like, hey, you're not, you're not doing any Ironman in five weeks time. And I was like, well, I've committed like 12 other people. So I went around my gym and said, hey guys, who wants to do an Ironman? And I had a bunch <laughs> of people put their hand up and say, yeah, let's go. So it's like, there's no way I could let them have all the fun. So, you know, I, I rehabbed it really, really well and quickly. Um, just focused for the five weeks on getting rehab done, sitting on the bike on the indoor trainer, not moving a lot, super stiff in my upper back. But yeah, prepped it, got it ready, got it done, had a blast, enjoyed every minute of that 10 hours. Wow. When you get off, when you, when you swim and then you bike and then you get off the bike and you're staring at a marathon, what is going through your, <laughs> through your mind after already having done all of that other shit? What is going through your mind of like, oh, now Man. I'm just gonna casually run 26.2 miles? Well, all I was thinking in my head is like, buckle up, buddy. You're in for a long day out here. And it's bloody hot too. <laughs> and it was Damn. hot, man. It was hot. It was like, uh, probably if I had to put it in Fahrenheit for you guys, I don't know, maybe 80 degrees, 80 degrees mm -hmm. somewhere there. Um, at, you know, two in the afternoon, you just, you're taken off for, you know, yeah, 26 miles. Um, yeah. You know, after 3.8 Ks in the water, which was beautiful, by the way, the water out there at that point in time at eight o'clock in the morning, which is, glass and uh super clear crystal water um in a beautiful spot in australia as well um and then from there you jump on to you know 180 kilometer bike ride and so what's that 100 and 112 i think it's like maybe 112 miles of bike riding and then yeah then you jump into your 26 mile run so yeah i actually really i loved it as soon as i got off the bike i was so keen to get off the bike that i was like give me the marathon please like put me off get me off this thing. I'm, I'm sick <laughs> yeah. of sitting in the saddle um but then you get 20ks you know or 12 miles or so into the run and you're just like all right put me back in the water i'm ready to get back in the water but you're not getting back <laughs> in the water right like you're done after the marathon but you just wanted to be anywhere anywhere that you were you wanted to be on the other leg um right. <clears throat> so yeah that was and that's i kind of fell in love with it you know well and truly at that point after you know doing that one so it's been on the top of my list to do again so i actually haven't told anyone this apart from just a couple of close people um to me but i guess you know you guys are just great great 
spot to try and put it out there. Um, and we're working towards, you know, trying to organize this. Um, if it goes ahead, fantastic. It would be a cool accomplishment. Um, but at the end of the year, I'd like to go back to Busso, um, which is where the Ironman, it was Ironman Busso. Um, and in my mind, I've had this thing. Um, you guys have probably heard of, you know, the people doing the five, the 500 and the five minutes. So the 500 pound back squat and the five, oh, some yeah. five minute mile. Yep. Um, I think in my mind, I've never done a 500 pound back squat. I've done 215 kilos. So I think it's about 12 kilos off the 500. Um, I can do the sub five minute mile. Um, and then one time Dave Castro messaged me and said, could you do sub five minute mile, the 500 pound back squat and 50 chest bar pull ups. I was like, yeah, look, I could do the chest bars. I could do the sub five minute mile roughly, you know, I'm a little bit off 12 kilos. So what's that like? I don't know. Uh, is that like 12 kilos, 28 pounds, uh, 20 25, pounds. 30 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that off of the, the back squat. Um, but then I thought to myself, how far could we go to the ends of the spectrum in, in this respect? And I figured it would be a 300 kilo deadlift and an iron man and do them all and do them both in under 10 hours. So I didn't come under 10 hours in my iron man. Um, I did 10 hours and 15 minutes or 10 hours and 14 minutes. Um, but I figured if I could pull a deadlift, 300 kilo deadlift, 660 pound deadlift, and then Sheesh. usually go straight from the deadlift into the Ironman and get the Ironman done and the deadlift done in under 10 hours, that'd be, that'd be a pretty mean feat. And um, so that's kind of, that's a bit of a, um, a bucket list goal for me to, to, to probably have a crack at at the end of the year if, if, if all things go well. Good luck. If you do it, the next step is doing the four... Uh, the 500 pound back squat after you ran the marathon. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> man, that would be that would be that would be that would be an, that would be an accomplishment for sure. Like it's, I just think I think those things are just so ends of the spectrum that you don't get too much more raw, you don't get too much more raw strength than pulling a heavy dead, and then you don't get too much more endurance than doing a an Ironman. So I figure if you could bring those two ends of the spectrum, and they're both you know respectable. They're both respectable numbers in each of those categories. And I think if someone could do them and not only do them, not only do them in a day, but do them, do those times together, like both of the events together in under 10. I That's think pretty gnarly. Pretty, I think that'd be pretty cool. So yeah, aside from, you know, competing in CrossFit, um, I'll, I'll do some competitions at the end of the year, no doubt in, in team. Um, you know, if I don't qualify for the games this year, I would, you know, love to raise my hand to do demo team again. Had a blast doing that. Had such an experience. I'd love to do that again. Um, it's a lot of fun, between... isn't it? Oh, mate, mate. So good. You've done it before, haven't you? Yeah, 2019. Was... Did you love it? Yeah, I loved it. It's great. Yeah, you get the you get to experience competing without the pressure of competing. Oh, yeah, you know? man. It's just, just the best. <laughs> Just the best. It's so so much fun. I and like it. after you do the workouts, you get to watch everybody else doing. It. It's like ah, I would have got that one, or you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You kind of get the best of both worlds, right? So yeah, I had a blast, and I'll put my hand up for that again for sure. And you know, if other things pop up in in the space at the back end of the year, um, you know, I'll do them too. Like I think you know, if I can jump into a weightlifting competition, you know, I'd love to do that. I think. Um, I'd love to do another powerlifting competition for sure. And, you know, I probably should if I want to build up to a heavy deadlift. Um, I think um, building that gap in my deadlift is probably the, going to be the hardest thing to do. Um, but aside from that, you know, um, I've been playing a bit of golf too lately. So I wouldn't mind trying to get work on my golf drive um, a, a lot this year. And I wouldn't mind signing up to maybe, you know, uh, a longest drive competition or something just for fun. <laughs> You're all over the place. Just for but fun. In, in a good <laughs> yeah. way, though. In a good way, you're yeah, all over the place. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool, too. So, yeah, uh, I might, might have a crack it out. My last question for you before I turn it over to Christian. Uh, my last question, it's a two-part. So, you uh, went to the games, was uh 2015 or 2016? Sorry. Was your yeah, first 16 year? 16 was my rookie. Yeah. Okay, so the first part, and then I'll, I'll get to the second before I uh, let you tune in here. The first part is when you first started, were you kind of just blinders, CrossFit only, living in the gym, yada, yada? Um, that's the first part. And then the second part is obviously right now in your life and career, you're not. You're everywhere. You're doing a lot of different things. Um, how have you evolved throughout this time? And 
has it helped you, I guess, mentally to, to stay in it? Cause you know, life as a CrossFit athlete, as you know, is, uh, it's a long road and it's one that is never ending. Um, yeah. so yeah. How's that been? Yeah. So when I initially started, I was, man, I was in the gym all the time. All I did was CrossFit. I didn't do anything else outside of CrossFit because I felt like if I did anything else outside of CrossFit and I got hurt doing something else and I hadn't made the games yet, I would be very like disappointed with, with myself. So I kind of like held back on a lot of the things that I loved. Like I wasn't surfing as much. I wasn't playing touch football anymore. I was, um, you know, literally just, I had, was laser, laser, laser focused on getting, making it to the CrossFit games. And that was, that was a sole goal for many years. Um, finally cracked it in 2016, almost made it in 2014. Khan actually pipped me on the, on the line for a third place finish at the, at the Australian regionals, um, in 2014. And then, um, so it came, ended up coming forth that year. And then I didn't make it until two years later. So 2016, I was basically through that whole period from say 2012 all the way through to 2016, laser focused on qualifying for the CrossFit games. Um, finally did like, like, you know, luckily enough, I can, um, and had a great time in the lead up to that, you know, my CrossFit games experience between, you know, 16, 17, 18, um, were the lead ups were fantastic. Like the training was good. The regionals, uh, sanctioned events were, um, exceptionally good, performed very well there. Um, and then never really pieced it together just quite right at the games, like just never, never really got the result that I felt, um, maybe not that I was deserving of, but never got the result that I thought capable. I was capable, capable yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt like I had, you know, I made mistakes. I didn't execute. I felt like, um, you know, there were, things just didn't add up, you know, maybe didn't quite taper quite right, felt off, felt flat, felt this, felt that. Um, Preparation could have been, you know, slightly different in some aspects, I guess, now looking in hindsight. Um, but then 2019 um, was made every single one of those years worthwhile. I got a fifth place. Um, you know, if, that was, if that's the last time I ever go back to the CrossFit Games as an individual athlete, you know, I can, you know, happily, you know, conclude my CrossFit career and feel accomplished and feel satisfied and not be, you know, uh, keeping myself up at night, you know, beating myself about things I could have done better. Cool. Christian, anything to uh, close us out before we hot seat it? We didn't really get to touch on this, but uh, the whole vegan aspect, if you've been um, yeah. in that that world for a long time, or is this something that's relatively yeah. new for you? Yeah. So, um, so I actually did, I went vegan for, um, you know, a couple of months back in 2013. Um, and I guess the reasoning behind it for me was, you know, it was not good enough. So I never, never held on to it. And, so before um, it was like as cool as it is now to go vegan. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, uh, yeah, back then I was like, I read a book, I read a book, um, from, uh, a guy named Brendan Brazier. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. This might be the, a, a cool way to increase performance. Um, and if you, you know, you do it well, you can, you know, maintain strength and whatnot. And, you know, it might make you function a little bit better as an athlete. And um, so I tried it for a while, didn't see any huge difference. Um, and then kind of just went back to what I was doing because I was, you know, scared and worried. I had a lot of people telling me that it's, you know, it's going to make me you know, weaker and, and, and not as good. I'm not going to be able to recover as well. So I, you know, I just, I basically just took the advice of the people around me. Um, and then, yeah, you know, come full circle again in 2019, I went vegan again and never looked back. I made a decision one day that, you know, I'm going to do it for the animals. And um, I, yeah, that's basically, that's, that's my reason. I just, I have put it all the emphasis in there. And I said to myself at that point in time, um, that even if it was a, you know, if it did adversely affect my, you know, peak performance, don't care. I'm going to do it because this is why I want to do it. And, and, and that was that. And to be honest, I felt, have felt in physically, physically zero change. Like if I'm still, I'm stronger than I was in 2019, like I'm, st I'm hitting PRs this year. Um, and, and I think that was a progression that was going to happen regardless of the diet I was on. I've always ate pretty well. Like my diet's always been pretty clean. Um, but I think, you know, the progression regardless if I was, you know, eating, eating, you know, 
everything that you'd normally see in a, in a typical in a typical diet, you know, I'd, I'd still be getting stronger as well now. But um, I'm still getting stronger as a vegan, um, I'm hitting hitting good numbers, and I'm also feeling you know fit and fast and, and everything like that too. So I've I've seen zero change positively or negatively. It's almost like nothing has changed at all um, in terms of in terms of that. Um, so I've been going almost two and a half years now, and yeah, feel great. I'm still the same weight. I'm still, you know, um, still back squatting, back squatting over 200, deadlifting, you know, 200. And I pulled 260 kilos the other day. That's a all time lifetime PR. Um, back squatted 215 kilos lifetime PR. Um, you know, bench benching maybe like I don't know what it works out to be. Two point uh, like 100. And, I think I'm pressed maybe like just under 140 kilos, like 300 pounds maybe. I got to um, say too, I, I appreciate the conversions as well because me in my head when I hear kilos, I'm doing the math 2.2 .2 carry to one. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> I like, appreciate I it. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying my best. I, I like we've been around it so long that I have to try and be like pretty quick smart about it. Um, but yeah, like so all those, all those numbers are great and um, well, good for me anyway in, in like in, for what I can do. Um, and then in terms of like aerobic capacity and things like that, like I'm still, I'm still swimming fast, running fast, biking fast. And, um, you know, I can still string together some, some muscle ups and handstand walking and things like that too. I don't think the skills ever leave as long as you're, you know, being persistent. So, um, in, in my eyes, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. Love it. Absolutely. Really. Like I really love it. And, and it wasn't a hard thing for me at all. Like changing my diet to, to doing that. Um, I guess people would see it as a huge task, but kind of like anything you build yourself up for whatever you're about to do well, i remember doing the, the half iron man i did with zero preparation was harder than the full iron man with a bit of preparation so all i did was i did a bit of preparation you know to to jump into this you know new um way of way of living and way of eating and yeah has not never looked back not even once not even comp like not even it was across my mind that i would go back to doing what i was doing before i just thought why would i like i'm feeling great wake up with tons of energy um, I'm sleeping well, I'm competing well, I'm training well. Um, so why, <laughs> why would I? And just never, just, it's just not a, it's, not, it's been a non thing. Cool. Cool. Hot seat. Hot seat time. All right, James, cool. you're going on the hot seat, man. Watch out. <laughs> Let's go. A couple, couple of Hit quick me. questions. Give you the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Would you rather move fast or lift heavy? Move fast. Coffee or pre-workout? Coffee. Current favorite sneaker? Oh, that's a hard one. Oh, far out. Um, probably, oh, I'd have to say, oh, oh, man, there's so many that I enjoy. Oh, far out. I'll probably say my, um, probably say my Converse high tops. All right. Um, if you had to pick one movement to do for the rest of your life, what would it be? Running. Uh, current favorite song? Oh, that is tough too. Oh my God. Uh, probably, uh, uh, <laughs> probably, to be honest, probably Hold On To Money by Bia. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll throw in a bonus one. Favorite vegetable? Oh, favorite vegetable, uh, probably, um, oh man, that's tough too. I do like a lot of vegetables, uh, probably, um, probably potato. All right. There you have it. That's me. <laughs> he passed. Yeah. Well, well done. Well done. You know, some of those questions are hard, man. <laughs> yeah, they, well, are. Well, they are. At, th at 3 30 in the morning or 4 a.m. right now, I can imagine. We owe you lots of coffee the next time we see you. If you like coffee, that I'll uh, hook it up for sure. Man, I will I love it. I love coffee so much. I, I'm addicted. Like that's probably my that's my one my one addiction is is um uh, is coffee. So um, all right, well I, done. I just, yeah, just love it. Good luck Sorry. in the season. If you make the games and you're over here, you're going to get bags of coffee from us for sure. <laughs> Can't wait, guys. Can't wait. I appreciate right. your time, man. Hey, no worries at all. Yeah. Later, James. All right. James Newberry. Man, we had a good time in Miami with James, right? Yeah, it was a good time. That was a good, good old, time. Good old 11.
good old 11 time, uh, <laughs> just getting out of there and realize, didn't even realize I left at 6 30 AM until I want to say the next day, but it wasn't the next, it was that day when I woke up that at two 30. Wait yeah. a second. Let's, I, wait, man. James, bring James back on for this. <laughs> everyone. James Newberry is back. He's back. Everyone. We didn't get into that. Like that was a night. That was a night. <laughs> oh, that was a night, man. Like far out. I just like when I looked up and I saw what time it was, I was like, wow, it's already like five in the morning. What's going on here? Is so, this real I, life? Is this real yeah, life? Yeah, is this real life? But hey, like when you're in Miami, why not, right? Like you've got to be there, you've got to enjoy all aspects of life. You can't just be like, <laughs> well, for me anyway, I understand why people, I understand why people, you know, just want to you know, focus on their thing, but hey, I'm all about the experience. I'm all about trying, you know, as much different stuff as possible, whether it be travel or training or hard, like hard tasks or tasks that I think are cool. You know, meeting new people. I love meeting new people. That's why I love to travel so much, get to get around and, and, and visit cool places and, and, you know, party with people I never expected to party with, surf in cool random locations um you know create things love creating things love a project love tinkering around with old cars and, and doing old cars up and you know old four by fours like scouts and things and um you know give me anything like i'm just uh you know just give me whatever and i'll probably make something of it <laughs> yeah i i love both spectrums of that i really respect both spectrums the one spectrum is yours where it's like wow this uh elite athlete also can just let his hair down, his dreads down, and and have a good time. And then yeah. uh, one time, Carrie Pierce. Business time. Yeah, time love business. Carrie Pierce. Love Carrie Pierce. She did a competition I hosted in New York City, and afterwards we take her to City Field to watch the New York Mets. And we're in a suite, and there's all this food, all this drinks, and the competition's over. She already won. She crushed it. Whatever. And she had, she's like having like water. And like some of the grilled chicken from, uh, and like some like plain lettuce. And I'm like, wow, like kudos to you. Like you're not even yeah. going to chill after, you know, so you got yeah. James letting it loose. And then you got the other side that, you know, still well, keeps it high and tight. Yeah. There was a point in time where I would have done the same thing. Absolutely. Um, mm. yeah. In that laser focus period, but you know, I started doing this stuff in, you know, 2011. So it's been quite some time and, um, and, you know, I absolutely, you know, commend people that that can, you know, that want to do that and then do stick to that just because of, you know, just their focus and their mindset and their drive to do what they want to do. Absolutely. For me, over the course of time, like I've changed in many, many ways and I am having the time of my life letting my hair down a little bit more, you know, you know, going out and, and having a run on Waterpalooza floor without, a, you know, without a ton of preparation. Um, and, you know, being able to go and meet guys like you, uh, and, and have a good time and getting to know people, it just fires me up so much more these days. I'm just, um, I'm, I'm enjoying, you know, putting everything like, you know, uh, the Khan says this all the time, you know, work hard, play hard. I love to work hard. I love to have a goal. I love to push myself in the gym and outside of the gym and love to put myself in as many different uncomfortable situations as possible. Um, and I can foresee this year, you know, probably do some adventure racing as well and probably do a ton of hiking um, with my girlfriend because um, she's she's all about it as well. She loves to just try a bunch of different stuff and, you know, just chuck her hat in the ring for whatever as well. And, you know, I think that's why we're vibing so well is that we're just like, yeah, you want to do that? Let's do that. Why not? Let's do it. Like we're, we've got the ability to do it. Um, but then also, you know, when we have the opportunity, like, yeah, we'd love to go out to a nice bar and have some cocktails for sure. Yeah. Word up. It's great right, way well, to live. We pulled yep. you back in for the after hours. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for coming <laughs> That's back. Cool. That's All right. Cool. For real this time later, we'll get that coffee ready for you when you come to the yep. States. Have a great day today. All right. Thanks. Thanks guys. Later, man. Later. All right. Um, we're going to wrap it up. We got, we got Cody Mooney here on deck. So um, bye. <laughs> All right, everyone. Joe Roscoe here, co-host of MFLH Pod. That was co-host and founder Christian Harris. Special thanks again to James Newberry. Uh, if you want to check us out, all things clothing and training, move fast, lift heavy.com. Until next time, we'll see you when we see you. Later.